I'm going to work practice problem number 9 and practice problem number 10. And here we have a stone is thrown horizontally at a speed of 5 meters per second from the top of a cliff uh, 78.4 meters high. How long does it take the stone to reach um, the bottom of the cliff? How far from the base of the cliff will the stone hit the ground? And what are the horizontal and vertical components of the stone's final velocity just before hitting the ground? Now number 10 is really matched with number 9. Uh, how would the three answers to, to problem 9 change if the stone were thrown with twice the horizontal speed and if the stone were thrown with the same speed but the cliff were twice as high? So I'm going to kind of work these two problems together. So first, let's work problem number 9. And I've already set it up here with given, find, and solve. The stone is thrown horizontally. That means it has no initial velocity in the y direction. All its initial velocity is in the x direction of 5 meters per second. The stone will drop 78.4 meters. And we want to know how far is it going to go, how much time, uh, you know, delta x and vx and vy. So uh, first, let's do part A. So let's solve it. So let's do part A. Um, well. If, look how much we know in the y direction. We know how far it falls. We know the initial velocity is zero. Um, and we know what the acceleration is in the y direction, even though it's not shown here. It's negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So knowing all that, I can use the third kinematic equation. Okay, to solve for time. Now, folks, on many of the projectile motion problems, this third kinematic equation is the one you're going to use the most. So really keep this one in mind when you're trying to solve a problem. And so I look at delta y. Yes, I know what delta y is. I know what v naught y is. It's actually 0, so that whole thing goes away. And I know what this is. So the only unknown is time. So I'm going to solve for time. So that's 0, so we know that delta y is equal to 1 half a t squared. So I'm going to solve for t. t is equal to, well, multiply both sides by 2, divide by a, and take the square root. So 2 times delta y divided by a, take the square root. And there's the expression for time. Now we're going to plug in the numbers. Uh, so time is equal to the square root of 2 times delta y, negative 78.4 meters, divided by negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And you get a time, when you plug that into your calculator, you should get 4.0 seconds. For part B, we want to know what is delta x. There's only one kinematic equation in the x direction when you're dealing with projectile motion problems because there's no acceleration in the x direction. I mean, you could start off like this. Delta x equals v naught x times t plus 1 half a x t squared. But this would be silly because the acceleration in the x direction is zero. So this is it right here. So we know what the velocity in the x direction is. It's 5 meters per second. And we know how much time went by from part A, 4.0 seconds. So that's going to be delta x equals 20 meters. Okay, and then part C, well, the velocity in the x direction, I mean, if, if we want to know what this is, look, the velocity in the x direction doesn't change. There's no acceleration in the x direction. So the velocity in the x direction is constant. It's just 5 meters per second. But the velocity in the y direction does change. Now, you've got... Um, 
a lot of choices here, but I'm going to use the first kinematic equation. Oops. And so <clears throat> when I plug in my numbers for the final velocity, well, this is zero. And this is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And this is 4 seconds. So Vy is equal to uh, what's 4 times 9.8? It's, what is it, 39.2? negative 39.2 meters per second. And it makes sense that it's negative, isn't it? Because what direction is the final velocity in the y direction? It's going to be it's going to be down. Yeah, negative. So these are the two answers that we need for part C. So now we're finished with uh, practice problem 9. Now practice problem 10 Zoom out again here. Um, well, for part A, it's the same problem as this, but we're going to double the horizontal velocity. In other words, Vx is equal, or V0x is equal to 10 meters per second. Now, watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to take a shortcut. It says, you know, what happens to the time, the delta x, and vx and, v, and, and vy? <coughs> so let's take a look at time, given this v naught x. Well, for part a, now this is part a for practice problem 10, but this is part a for number 9. I look and it says delta y equals v naught y, t it, 2 times delta, what's true about delta y? Delta y is the same. The only thing we did in part A of practice problem 10 is we doubled the horizontal speed. We didn't change the height of the cliff. So what that means is that there's no change. So since there's no change, I'm not going to do all this over again. I'm just going to say t equals 4.0 seconds. It's the same as before. Now for part B, what do we want to know? Delta x. Well, when I look at this equation, uh, delta x equals the initial velocity in the x direction times time. Well, my time is uh, the same. But what's true about my horizontal velocity now? It's twice as much. It's 10 meters per second, but for the same amount of time. So 10 times 4 is 40 meters. Well, in this problem, it was 20 meters. So delta x doubled. It's twice as big if you go twice as fast in the x direction. For part C, well, Vx is 10 meters per second. That's given, and it doesn't change. But look at Vy. When I look at Vy over here, v not y is still 0. The acceleration is still negative 9.8. And the time is still 4 seconds. So that didn't change. So therefore, Vy didn't change. This is still negative 30, whoops. Thirty-nine point two meters per second. So this is the same and this is double. Now for part B, we said we're now going to change delta y. Delta y is going to be double. So what's 2 times 78.4? That's 0 0.8 
and that's going to be 16, 14, 156, negative 156. Ah, why don't I just put it like meters? Why don't I just put it like this? It's two times negative 78.4 meters. I'm just going to leave it like that, and you'll see why here in a second. So when I look at uh, part A, that's where I want to know what's going on with time. Well, look at how I solved time over here. I went t is equal to the square root of 2. But now, instead of negative 78.4, I'm going to put 2 times negative 78.4. And I'm going to divide this by negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Now what I'm going to get is the same answer, except that I'm multiplying by this 2 inside the square root sign. So time is going to be equal to, really, the square root of 2 times 4 seconds. So it's the square root of 2 more than that. Now you can figure out what that time is. I, it's, if you plug that in your calculator, I think you get 5.7 seconds. But really, the effect it had on the time that this rock was falling is that it's going to fall the square root of 2 times more time than it was before I doubled the height. Now for part B, I want to know what is happening with delta x. Well, delta x is still, well, it's still 5 meters per second. But now the time, the time is the square root of 2 times 4 seconds. Which means that my delta x is going to be the square root of 2 times what I got before, the square root of 2 times 20 meters. Now you can figure that out and um, to be, I think it's 28 meters, if you round it off. But the idea is that it's the square root of 2 times bigger than it was before because I doubled the height. And finally for part C, well, Vx is the same. We didn't change that. It's 5 meters per second. But let's look at Vy. It e equals V naught Y plus A times T. But A is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. This is 0. Times the square root of 2 times 4 seconds. Well, this is 4 seconds and this is just going to give us what we got before. Negative square root of 2 times 39.2 meters per second. I guess I could have put the negative in there. And that turns out to be um, 55, if you round it off. But, so, if you double the speed of the stone but keep the height the same, it has a different effect. You double how far away it landed, but you're not doubling anything in the y direction. But if you double your height, you have this effect on the problem. Okay, so that's, uh, that is practice problem 9 and 10 together. Thank <laughs> you.